Okay. Okay, welcome to the uh, meet this meeting on September 22nd of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And I'd like to take attendance. I'm Myra Ross, I'm here. Um, Elise Link. I'm here. Darren Darren. Oh, she's mood, muted. Uh, one second, Saren. I unmuted you. Wait, I tried to. Wait. Unmute. Uh, Sarah, you, can you hear us? Oh, she can hear us, but we can't hear her. I can't. I can't for some reason. I, oh, okay. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear? Okay. Yes. There, I'm good. here. And Ruth Smith. Here. And has Tori come? Tori. Not uh, even yet. She, uh, you know what? Tori sent me an email saying she will be running a few minutes late. Oh, okay. Okay. So Tori Dixon will be here later. Um, I know that we um, had recommendations for two new members. I don't know if they were in fact appointed last night. I think that was the initial plan. Do you know, Maureen? I don't know what happened last night if they were okay. officially appointed. So, but when, okay. once I do know that officially, I will certainly let you okay. know. But I just want the other committee members to know that there will be two new members of the committee. We interviewed last week, there were three applicants and we chose two and um, hopefully they'll be with us at the next meeting, hopefully. Um, so currently we have representative from the town clerk's office, the acting town clerk, Sue. I can't remember your last name, embarrassing. It's okay, Audette. I bet, that's right. Okay. Audette. So it, um, I just was, uh, we were hoping to get some kind of um, information about how the primary election went from the perspective of uh, access for people with various disabilities. And if you could just tell us, you know, how many people actually did vote in person and if there were any requests or anything like that for ex accommodations. Sure, sure. Um, so I actually can't answer the question on how many people voted in person because I have more of the figures and I don't have them with me, but I can grab them. Um, more people voted by mail and ballot, either early ballot or absentee ballot. Um, than they did voting in person. So it was very, very low turnout. Uh, what we did after speaking to Maureen before the election or the primary is um, we sent out a letter to the wardens before each, each election, just telling them, you know, this is what's particular to this election, what to be on the lookout for, um, how we're doing something, if it's any different. And in that letter, I addressed um, offering that Automark voter assist terminal for people that either come in with a seeing eye dog or white cane or some kind of visible disability. Um, so that was, the wardens disseminated that information down to the check-in workers. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna do the same exact thing for November. And, um, but as far as calls go, I, I just did this exact same report last night for the town council. Um, we received absolutely no phone calls on election day from anyone saying they had any problem with any kind of like entry, getting into the, any of the buildings. Um, we were speaking mostly on the high school because that's a new polling place, but mm -hmm. the only, we had the normal issues, you know, like, um, you know, am I registered to vote? Where do I go? Uh, that kind of thing. So it was mm -hmm. a relatively quiet election because of the low voter turnout, I think. Um, and so for November, I'm pretty much expecting the same thing. I, I expect a higher turnout, but it's not going to be anywhere near what we normally experience for a presidential election because of the option of voting by mail. And right now we're around 7,000, almost 900 requests for mail-in ballots out of 16,000 plus voters so that that's are registered. 50% so far. And a yeah. lot of our students who probably won't be here, so. And that's huge. That's huge because yeah, I mean, that's already a fifty percent voter turnout, which is huge. If everybody returns their ballot, so um, do you so know when the ballots will be mailed? So we're waiting. Uh, the state has to get them to all cities and town clerks by October 9th. As soon as we get them, we did. They just show up, and uh, as soon as we get them, we'll turn around and start getting them out, and they'll be going out every day. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, I do know that there was a way for people to vote um, independently and privately using a computer. Um, and it did work for the primary, although I didn't try it because the time was so short, I somehow didn't trust that it would work. But I know someone who actually did it. I know two people who actually did it. Um, and what you do is um, they're going to send something out, again, to at least the blindness organizations are going to send something out with instructions. But what happened the last time was that people actually put, um, you had to go online and apply again for a mail-in ballot. And you had to attach that to an email that pretty much gave your identifying information and what party you wanted to vote in. And you sent it to this woman named Kelly in the Secretary of State's office. And then she uh, sent you a link to an online ballot, which is markable online. Um, and then you could uh, mail it back. You print it out and you could mail it back. Um, so that's pretty cool. And it did work. I don't know if they're going to make any changes to it, but I know it is possible or it was possible and it will be again possible to vote independently and privately if you cannot uh, mark a paper ballot by yourself. So you're discussing people that are inside the country, a normal voter, yes. um, not an overseas voter, correct? No. Yeah. Okay. Because the overseas voters already had that option. We emailed their ballots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's what they modeled it on. Um, but yeah, so they're for, um, I guess for people who cannot mark a ballot for whatever reason, um, they, they can use this. Well, it's interesting because uh, we're having a webinar Thursday. Um, at one o'clock through the Secretary of State and Ke Kelly, it's Kelly Emmons. Yeah, um, and they're right. going to be talking. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And she is going to be telling us all about the new state portal, the voter, the online voter, you know, so this is probably what they're going to be talking about. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. We'll be on the lookout. Cool. We're going to attend it. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Yeah, Sue, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Myra. Uh, Sue, I stopped by the town clerk's office last week and I had uh, mentioned this to you, Sue, and I just re realized I, I remember saying I would send you the link that Myra had provided about more information. So I don't know if that's needed now since you No, she that. doesn't. No, I don't think yeah, she yeah. needs it because she's going to go to the webinar. If they give you any information, could you send that on to Maureen? Um, I sure they, will. If, yeah, that, a link or anything so that you know, the people in the town can get or put it on, you know, and put it on the town website on your yep. page so that people who might need it can find it because there are people who can use computer but you know they might not be they might not have the dexterity to mark a ballot or the ability to read the ballot and mark it in the right place okay yeah so, making a note here cool yeah, that's a great that's a great suggestion because i know that brianna is our uh, communications manager she we have a dedicated page on the town website about all information related to the elections and so if there is uh you know official information from the state about the the what we we're just talking about we can add it to yes to that yeah yeah that would be really cool that would be great mm -hmm. and if you so if you could put it on the website and and mail and email it to maureen um that would be uh, thank you yeah sure does anybody have any questions for Sue? I, I do. I have two questions. Okay. One of them, I remember when we got the first, um, before the primary, primaries, whether we want to vote by mail, check, and you can check also if you want to get mail in voting for the November election, you could check both of them. So those of us that check the two boxes, we don't have to request mail in vote again, right? That is correct. Yeah, and please don't because <laughs> number one, you're, well, you're spending, well, you don't have to spend money that's post is prepaid, but it's um, work for the post office. It's work for us when it comes in. We'll go to set you up. We'll look you up in the computer to find out you're already set up. Then we have to say, oh, it's a duplicate. Now we're putting it in a duplicate pot. So yeah, so, but if you're curious as to whether you are already set up, you can do yes. the track, track my ballot and it should say pending. I'll send yeah. you the link uh, to everyone. Um, yeah. Track I did it. my ballot. You can see, it'll tell you, um, you can, it says pending and then it says accepted once you have, once they have got received, once they received your ballot. So oh, once it comes you know back what? to us. 
Yes, that was yes. my second question, actually. Yeah. I got that uh, website, so I checked it just to make sure, because I had already uh, put my ballot in the uh, drop-off box, mm -hmm. and I could not find anything about my name. Oh. was very blank, and I was very worried. I said, huh, I hope they got my ballot, you know. The if end you, result didn't make any difference, but you know. Well, if that ever, if, if something doesn't make sense when you look yourself up, just call our yeah. office. Yeah, yeah, or email us, yeah. Either way, we'll get back to you. We'll look you up, just takes a minute. Hmm. Yeah. And Saren, um, hmm. I believe you're the one that asked, uh, expressed that you would like to volunteer on election day, was that it? And I gave you the form? Yeah, you, d you did, but I wasn't really, thinking of being in a polling booth because I would find myself to be very vulnerable sure, because yeah. of my age. Mm -hmm. But I thought if there is something I could do in the background, you know, like stuff envelopes, put stickers on and things like that. Are you talking about leading like, up? Are you talking about leading up to election day? Yes. So we're currently working with HR because right now in order to work in the town hall, you have to be an election worker or an employee in essence. And I'm, because we have a lot of League of Women Voters volunteering their time as well. And, mm -hmm. but they want to volunteer. And this is the right. problem is that everyone needs to become an employee in order to work. So we're trying to figure out how to get around that right now. So it's oh, kind of, I yeah, I know. I have so many people offering their help and it's like, ah, you know, and I'm, I'm dying to get people yeah. in here. We do, we have stuffing and we, once the ballots yeah. come, we're going to be very busy. Um, but, yeah. Or in, context, of the in context of being an employee, what, what does that mean to you? Because, because they're board members, they all have to take the open meeting law training. No, and, no. Okay. it's becoming an employee. It's actually, okay. Yeah, submitting paperwork to become an employee, having a quarry check, like, all, all that yeah, stuff. All that. Oh, okay. God. Yeah, oh, I know. I is know. that a town regulation or is that a state law? I think it's a state law now. Interesting. Yeah. Even to come not into contact with people at all, just to stuff ballots? Mm -hmm. Wow. But you're still coming into the building. You're still here and breathing the air and all that. It's just the COVID, the whole COVID thing. Yeah. So it sounds like it's just COVID-19 related. Could they, could they not... give us like things we could work from our homes? That's a, no. I, <laughs> we can't, we can't, <laughs> ballots can't leave the building. Um, no, no. I mean, they're empties. You know, you're just stuffing yeah, but ballots you could mark into them. the envelopes. The yeah, envelopes. Yeah, no, that, that one would be fraught with, with uh, fraud yeah. accusation. Yeah, yeah, no, we leave, everything stays in house. And also, you know, um, I mean, we're putting labels on envelopes, things like that, but it needs to, we're printing as we go. We're trying to keep things contained. It's just, um, I believe me, I thought about this because so many people have offered and, um, and the ballots are coming to us from the state kitted. They call it a kit. So it's already pre-assembled. We just need to put oh, a label on it. Yeah, the ballot's yeah. already in the envelope, so I can't give that to you because the ballot's oh, in the envelope. Oh, they're already oh. stuck. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we oh, just have to put labels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's but very good. That's simple. appreciate it. Yeah, it does. It does. It speeds it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th this Great. has been really helpful. Are there any other questions for yeah. Susan? Well, how about census? How is that going? Is there anything needed for no, the census? It's not the census time of the year. We do that in January. Well, the US, I mean, the U.S. Yeah. Census, which oh, is uh, by the end of this month, I think it closes. Yeah. We're not involved in that. I, I'm not personally involved in that. Yeah. And I know the um, Shavina was, but she was taking a, a big back seat. It's more in, um, I think Athena has been working hard with that and, and probably Brianna. Yeah. Yeah. They both have been. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we're not directly involved. Yeah. And so what's, what's the meeting that you're about to attend? Uh, about the sec uh, rank voting? Rank choice voting, yeah. Yeah, yeah right after lunch. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. well, okay. Yeah, I would love some explanation about why we, you know, what that, are they going to eliminate a primary if they do that, or don't you really know yet? No, we don't know yet. We're talking, that's one of the things we're talking about. Because <laughs> okay. someone yeah. called last night to get us to vote yes on two, and I said, explain it to me, and she couldn't, so. 
that wasn't so good. <laughs> it is, it is, you know, my husband's an engineer. He's a smart guy. And uh, there's a great video from Minneapolis on how it all works. And there's, there's something called fractional votes. So it's like, if your whole vote doesn't go to this candidate, then this part of your vote goes now over to here. And then that part goes over. But Minneapolis did it with post-it notes that are colored and it made total sense to me and to everybody else on the committee. But I showed this video to him and he, he looked at it four times and he looked at me and he goes, I don't get it. And, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I says, oh, we're doomed. No. <laughs> it's complicated. I mean, and this is one of our challenges is that we have to take it down to explain it in the simplest terms. We all are agreed on that, you know? So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, We'll see what happens on the state level. We, and that's another thing that's, that's directing us in our decisions is what's going to happen on the state level. So. Yeah. Well, this has been really uh, helpful, Susan. Um, and yeah, please um, send me any information um, of anything you learn new at the, the webinar with the state. When is that meeting? Thursday. Thursday. Okay, Thursday. let me write that down. So, oh, so, so maybe on Friday, I will check in with you. Um, Maureen? Yeah, the League of Women Voters is in favor of ranked choice. So if you go on to their website, I think they'll have a, a good explanation for what okay. it's all about. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, all very right. Cool. thank you well, so thanks. much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Nice to yeah, see thank everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so the next thing we are going to talk about is the uh, consultant plan on the, the self-evaluation and what we might want to apply for as yes. a grant? Yes, so I have received big chunks of the draft self-evaluation and transition plan. Um, we, uh, staff, um, I'm not, actually the, the plan is massive 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 and i'm very very impressed um they found uh, a significant amount of things that the town needs to uh make uh compliant both you know parking lots sidewalks mm -hmm. inside buildings outside of buildings parking spaces entries elevators signage it's 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 a lot some of it is a, a good amount of it is just little things um and then other things are very uh costly uh and at this time i i thought i was going to be able to share with you all the plan the draft plan but it's just not ready to be shown um but once it is i i, I will certainly share it with you so I have, so in context of the, the Mass Office of Disability has a grant for, um, for making improvements of public, uh, public properties uh, to uh, remove physical barriers. Uh, and so I am trying to schedule a, a meeting with the uh, DPW Superintendent Guilford Mooring to discuss project ideas um, that um, that are uh, that are specifically coming from this draft plan, so I'm I'm gonna actually r write as I talk um, as because it'll be helpful for me. So ideas are and which and so here are some um, audible uh, signals um, which were identified in the plan and have been expressed from members of this committee that are not working properly. So perhaps those could be replaced. Uh, East Pleasant, no, sorry, South Pleasant Street along the town common, that's on the east side of South Pleasant Street and on the other side where Hastings uh, store is located. Uh, those sidewalks are just terrible. Um, <laughs> those, could, those could be a great project. Um, for, for replacement. Um, there's, um, I'm also looking at the bank center of what, uh, what items were identified in the plan um, for both inside and outside of the bank center. 
Um, this, so, um, such as like the sidewalks leading up to the bank center, there's stairs, um, just looking at the photos that are in this draft plan, it, it really just speaks to the, some of these issues. So, um, um, so part of this is about coordinating with other departments. And for me, it's specifically with DPW because they're the ones that are going to do the work physically. So I'm hoping to schedule a time to talk to DPW um, basically as soon as possible. Um, and um, I would love to get any input from, from the members here today of any projects that come to mind. Uh, Myra, I will, uh, Myra had sent me an email asking me to look at the conditions of the sidewalks and the crosswalk. Well, there is no crosswalk, but looking at the sidewalks on Tyler Street and on yeah. High Street. Yeah, those, so, uh, yeah, um, I noticed a lot of, um, broken asphalt roots coming up through the sidewalk. I noticed at the intersection of High and Tyler Street, uh, there is no uh, ramp for the sidewalk. It just so steps no down. Curb cut. Right, there's no yeah. curb cut. There's no curb, yeah, thank you. Well, all there is is the sidewalk that broke apart, but there isn't, there isn't any curb cut. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's um, Amity Street. I know it's not like super traveled a lot, but if you go past the um, movie theater and down further, it's awful. Yeah. So I've gotten, I'm, I've gotten my cane. When I use a cane, I get that stuck in the cracks all the time. Yeah, I've tr I've nearly broken my neck. All right. You know, yeah. I'm glad that you you mentioned that, Elise, because uh, so after I I looked at Tyler and High Street, I yeah. that was the way I was traveling home. So mm -hmm. I was, I was, I felt kind of creepy. I was just uh, driving really slow at looking at all the sidewalks. <laughs> oh. And I noticed, <laughs> I, I noticed that it's, yeah, Am Amity Street could be another project. It's horrible. Yeah. And I mean, huge. my elderly parents live there and sometimes like to walk to town. They can't, you know, okay. and I can't go, you know, try, I, I take my, my, you know, um, it's, I feel vulnerable going to visit my folks, even with my guide dog, because there's so many cracks and so many places I can fall. Yeah. Your so dog. I imagine anybody <laughs> having a problem. Well, it, what it seems like is that we have, uh, uh, we have so many projects. Yeah. Um, that have come from many, many, many years of neglect and it's, it's really, Amity Street is a very busily traveled street. So it yeah, is probably, it is. you know, it is probably something that we should consider, you know, seriously, as well as the uh, uh, audible traffic signals downtown, they just don't work. Yeah. No, they're awful. I, I have a question. Why do like Amity Street is right in the middle of the town? very That's central so why does the town need to wait for a grant Correct. to be given before they do it shouldn't that be on the top of the list of things that need to be done great that's question a, yeah that's a great question and uh, so and, in a lot of ways so i'm planning as i said i uh Hold that thought. I just want to announce to everyone that Tori is now um, in attendance. Hi, Tori. Hi, Tori. Hi, Tori. Hi, Tori. You're on mute, Tori. Um, but yeah, so that is why I uh, I'm hoping to talk to the to the DPW superintendent and also the town manager's office because there are so many projects to choose from, and so what is important is to find out well, what's the priority um because we can't fix everything no today and so you know of of just even this these four items that i jotted down the audible signals south pleasant street uh the sidewalks on both sides of the road the sidewalks and curb cuts at amity street and then high and tyler street 
Oh, so, well, that's just even a small, the high and that's just a, yeah, that's a high side street. street. I mean, yeah. you can go on Halleck Street and South Prospect, uh, North Prospect, you can barely walk there. Um, yeah. It's just crazy. And I went yesterday, I went, I mean, it's even a street, but I went for a walk with David yesterday, just walking up North Whitney toward Redgate Lane. You can trip your ankle on any step you take. Mm -hmm. There's so, and that's on the street because mm -hmm. the sidewalk is, in, is worse. And uh, no, there isn't a sidewalk actually for most of it. And it's just, it's so much neglect. Um, and I think we need to know, aside from this grant, what the, what the plan is about making this town pedestrian friendly at all. Yes, because I it's totally not. think so. I yeah. agree. Well, I, now, I wonder if they can prioritize making it pedestrian friendly. I wonder if we should talk with Guilford and yes. get our two cents into him. And maybe, you know, if they understand the struggles, maybe they might be more considerate to prioritize that. I second it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so, so the, sup the DPW superintendent is, you know, obviously very, very busy. Um, and um, so I, I'm not sure if he's available to attend a meeting. And in a lot of ways, that is one of the reasons, you know, why I am a liaison to this committee is that I can take your information and and pass it on to the town manager and to uh, other departments. Um, and so uh, I will certainly bring this up to uh, the town manager and, and to DBW um, about this. Uh, let's see here. And I, I know that Paul Balkelman, the town manager, you know, his one of his big priorities is to make downtown usable for for everyone, uh, particularly pedestrians and cyclists, um, and you know people with strollers, people people with all disabilities. Um, so that is something Hello? that he has has vocalized. Oh, sure. um, Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's something that is a priority um, of his. Um, so yeah, I'm doing a little better. Um, oh, it sounds like someone's on the phone. Can you go on mute? Yeah. Who's... Can you mute, mute Ruth? I'm gonna mute Ruth because it sounds like you're on the phone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I have difficulties muting people. Um, hold on. I, I well, uh, Maureen, you uh -huh. know this muting business. Uh, is pretty frustrating. Last yeah. meeting we had, I wanted to say something. I couldn't get on the internet for some reason. Then I connected by the telephone and I'm just trying to, I cannot raise my hand because it's the telephone conversation. And, and I was constantly muted. So I think it should be left to our a choice whether we want to mute ourselves like if I if we want to make a private call or something and we can just mute ourselves rather than being controlled and when we have something to say we have to fight to have you hear us so I don't understand the concept behind it I am sure you go to lots of IT meetings and there must be a reason so could you explain how this muting system goes and what is the decision behind it that you have the controls from the central location uh, great question Sarah and uh... Theoretically, you each should have the ability to mute and unmute yourself. And um, also, uh, if you want to raise your hand, go ahead and do this now. If you press star nine, it should, um, you should be able to um, quote unquote, raise your hand. Where, where is the star nine? Uh, I'm so on be, an iPad. It would be, uh, no, no, no. She's connected on an iPad. Elise is on the phone. 
She can no, do it. No, I'm not on. No, I'm not on the phone. I'm on the iPad. Oh, you're not on the phone. Yeah, she's no. She's on I tried the iPad doing too. it on the phone because the iPad was not cooperating. I wasn't getting on. I could see your faces oh. and hear you, but I had no way of getting oh, okay. on. But then the I Star got on. Nine, Star Nine works if you're on a phone. Yeah, yeah. If, you're on, if you're on a phone. Yeah. That you the can iPad it doesn't. Um, and then I heard did. that if you star six, that's another way to mute and unmute yourself. Does someone want to do that? As I think that star six is raise your hand. Hold on. I don't see. have a hand. I don't have a hand to raise here. But you have to be on the phone. It doesn't it work if you're on a computer. Yeah. You know, I, I guess I'll have iPad, to look into you, this. If, you, if you're on an iPad, you do get a hand to raise, but I don't have right. one pictured here. Okay. There is none. Star six is mute. And when you're, you're on the phone. Star six is mute? When when you're and which, on the one phone. Is, which one is raise your hand? I don't know. I've never star known. Star nine. Is, star nine is for raising your hand. Raise your, on, okay, going backwards. Okay. Star six is to mute or unmute yourself. But that's, does that work if you're on a landline or just on a mobile? I believe both. Okay. Yeah. But on the computer, it gets a little more complicated. It's, um, it's Alt A to mute and unmute, and Alt Y to raise your hand. Oh, thank you, Mara. That's very handy. So Alt, I, did, Alt I didn't know a. that. Hold on. Alt, Alt A, mute and unmute, and Alt why allegedly raises your hand, although on Zoom there is a tab button where it says raise your hand, you can go to it. The problem, I mean, if I had my, if I had my earphone, I would be doing it that way and I would be able to, you know, tab over and not bother everybody with the speech. And that's probably what, what I would do, but that's how blind people do it. They do it with an earphone. And I didn't use it because I didn't think I was gonna need to look anything up today. But um, well, thank you, Myra. That is very helpful. Saren, do you want to uh, experiment and, pre and press um, Alt A? Let me see. How would I get on iPad Alt A? No, well, there's uh, a button Alt. There's a button Alt, which is next to your space bar, to the left of your space bar. Yeah, but I only see your picture, so. No, do you have a keyboard? No, it's an iPad. Oh, she iPad has the same problem I'm having. Oh, so the iPad doesn't have a keyboard? No, but so right now iPad, it's not visible. On the Wait, iPad, can I, can I just have add a, something? Wait, Tori knows says, how to do it. Wait, on the what, Tori, iPad, what do you have yeah. a button that says more? And it has okay. three little dots above it. If you press yes. that, it gives you the option. To oh, I see. Hand. Raise hand, webinar center. Let me see. I'm raising my hand now. What happens? Oh, you raised your hand. Oh, you did. Okay. So they, right, no, there I'm, is something. Wait, and then there here? is also like I'm a mute. Okay. We only can have one person speak at one time. So Sarah, I can't sentence. get a word in edgewise. Okay. Never mind. Go ahead. So I, I, I just, I can't get a word in edgewise. I've been, I'm trying to, um, for five minutes, um, I don't have a hand here pictured on my iPad to raise. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. So what does that mean? So how did Saren do it again? Uh, I, uh, on the iPad, I go yeah. to the top right corner. All right. And then there is the first is mute. Then the second is stop video. The third is share content. Ah. Fourth is participant, and the fifth is dot, dot, dot. Underneath, it says more. Okay. When you press that more, it mm -hmm. says webinar settings, minimize mm -hmm. webinar, yes. lower hand, disconnect audio. So I'm going to. So what do I push? If what you want push? to raise your hand, I guess you have to push that raise your hand thing. What, raise what hand. raise your hand? Oh, it, oh, I see. It's not a picture, it's a word. Okay. Yes, 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 it's writing. Oh, right. okay. I, I yeah. really totally misunderstood. Okay. 
okay, so I have to go to that and do it that way. That's just a different way because there's no picture now. It's a word I have to do. Okay. Right, right, right. Thank you. <laughs> do you see where it okay. says mute? Do you see where it says mute and unmute, Elise? Is it yeah, on the no, screen? I, I got okay. that. I okay. got that. Okay. Yeah. I got so, uh, Maureen and uh, Myra, I wonder if it makes sense for us to agree that everybody will be unmuted so we can speak freely. And if we have like a phone coming in or there is noise happening in the background, we want to quiet it down, then we hit the mute button ourselves and unmuted later on when the noise is done. So That sounds fine to me as long as it works. I've been on it meetings works. where so many people are unmuted that you can't hear anything because there's so much background noise. But that's not the case here. Everybody's unmuted now and it's fine. Right. Because it's a small group. But I don't know yeah. what happens if in the case where Maureen says about Zoom, what? Zoom boomers or bummers or something like that. That I don't know. Oh, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. Because that, that only has to do with if people can get into the meeting who aren't authorized. And but I think this is actually, uh, this meet, these meetings are open to public, so anybody can No, she has to participate. let them in. No, actually, them in. Um, actually, Saren is correct. So uh, all board, oh. municipal board meetings yeah. are open to the public. Yeah. And so... Um, if a board, if someone from the public wants to uh, speak, um, which uh, it's, you know, we don't often have that here no. in our meetings, but it doesn't mean it won't happen. Um, a, a member of the public uh, can certainly attend and if there's an appropriate time um, to get public input, uh, they would have yeah. to raise their hand. And I know it's always at the bottom of the agenda. You know, yeah. public comments, anyone comments. And I know these meetings have to be put on the uh, Gazette or something announced because they're open meetings. Uh, you're half right. So, so, under, so to back up on the agenda, if you've noticed that, yes, one of the items, one of the last items is called general public comment period. And so under the Amherst Town Charter, every board must have a time, must have on their agenda item for to allow any member of the public to discuss, uh, to, uh, to have an opportunity to discuss something. So here you would, you would assume that it would be applicable to something that is related to disabilities. And so the chair would recognize that person and we would, depending on how many people were talking, we would, on general give them about three minutes to talk. Um, we see this tip more done uh, at the town council meetings, planning board meetings, and occasionally the zoning board of appeal meetings. Um, but all board meetings uh, need to ha offer this opportunity under the charter. Um, all uh, so also about the meeting agendas for this specific committee. Um, it is listed on the town calendar, which is located on the town website, and it's also listed on the web on the DAAC web uh, web page on the town website. Um, there are no public hearings uh, that that this committee uh, deals with. So uh, legal ads do not need to be placed in the Daily Hampshire Gazette. But other boards that do hold public hearings, that is a requirement. Um, and there are a couple other requirements such as like the abutters need to be notified by regular mail. But we don't, we don't handle um, applications that require that. Because I know a couple of years ago, one of our meetings uh, I think they overlook putting it uh, on the internet or on the in the newspapers or something. So we we had the quorum, but we couldn't officially meet. So we couldn't make any decisions. So that I rem that reminds me that these are open and they have to be uh, made public, the yep. time and the place. So yeah, exactly. All right, so do we want to return back to the conversation about uh, the yes. MOD grant? 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I guess what I was just thinking is, don't you have an October 9th deadline or something? Yes. So, so how that's, are we going to make this decision? Well, I'm you're providing, you're not making a decision. You're providing recommendations. Okay. So the town, town will be making a decision on um, what grant um, the town will be applying for. So I'm here to, to receive your input. I guess Morning. what I would say, what I would want to say is that the most um, the thing that's most likely to get the money is what we should apply for because there are so many things we need that we could fund a different way if we could, you know what I mean? We should take whatever money we can get. So I don't know who it is who has a sense of what they're more likely to fund, but if we could find that out, then we could apply for that. Sure. It, it thing comes to my mind. I was looking at the draft and what the transition plan was focusing on. I saw lots of outdoor activity places, like trails and places like that. I know there isn't enough of those for people with varying disabilities. So I wonder if some money could be obtained to either revitalize them or improve them or make it known, or maybe they might not have, like, uh, I remember there was one trail near Puffer's Pond, and they had for people with he, uh, seeing impairments like rope that they would follow up on things like that, which I thought was such a cool idea. And uh, so maybe introduce things that are lacking access to some group of disabilities and they could pour the money into that or something like that, I thought. Yeah, that's a really good, um, really good uh, comment, Saren. Um, so there are, few, there are some trails that are ADA compliant, but uh, certainly uh, others could also be made ADA compliant. Um, and then first, so you're suggesting for a specific disability or in general, um, you said the Puffer's Pond, uh, there are elements that are geared for people with visual impairments. Is that correct? No, it's I not mean, they, Puffer's Pond. It's a, it's a trail off on the other side of the street. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name. I can't even. Robert? No. Not no. Robert. no um, I know what you're talking about. Um, okay. Uh, geared towards. Uh, I mean, all right. well, that's. That, but boy, I mean, I'd so much rather have a sidewalk than that. I mean, I was on Robert Frost the other day. It is not remotely accessible. It's nuts. There's roots all over the place. You can barely walk on that thing. If, you, if you're in a chair, you could never go on it. Um, right. And, and uh, walking is pretty treacherous. So, you know, but I mean, it's true that it's, it would be nice if it wasn't, but Amity Street would be a whole lot better and accessible signals would be a whole lot better. So, oh yeah. I mean, I don't question that at all, one little bit. I think the town has to do it, whether we get any, a penny from this grant or not. It is the town's responsibility, I think. I yeah. look at it different. But the trails and things like that, they are recreation plans, uh, places, and the town, it will be down at the bottom of their priority list. So that's why I thought, you know, yes. that was how I was looking at it. Yeah, but I right. think that should be a discussion that the town really has to prioritize sidewalks and the audible signals, make it accessible to everyone, not only to disabled, mothers pushing their baby strollers are in the same boat, you know? Sure. Like mm -hmm. those of us using the wheelchair, just like a little threshold is a big barrier for me. The same is true for a mother mm -hmm. who's uh, pushing the baby stroller, so. Okay, so what, from what I'm hearing from Saren, your priority, uh, at least for this grant, uh, is for sidewalks and audible signals in, in the downtown. Is that what I'm hearing? E no, no. Because I think that should be the priority of the town. Of the town, yes. The yep. money, the public works money. Yeah. Whether yep. we get anything from this or not. But my 
priority is to address the places, the town, it won't be in the town's top to-do list. So that's why the trails came to my mind. Sure, sure. Uh, I see that uh, uh, Elise is raising your hand. Do you have something? Yeah. Um, the other thing about the audible traffic signals and crossing streets, I don't know if this has been brought up, but the walk signal is not nearly long enough for people to get across the street. So just for, you know, like elderly people or, you know, people mm -hmm. with strollers and stuff like yeah. that. Just another thing, another uh, thought. Okay. Right now I cannot raise my hand because I don't have my speech on because it would be disruptive to you if I did. So I guess what I'd like to say is that it would be good to know, according to what Saren said, is there any money that he intends to spend on sidewalks? Because I have the very unfortunate sense that if there were money to spend on it, he might have done it. And, oh. and, and it might have been a priority for other funding, and it wasn't. I don't really know, but it, the, the state of neglect of sidewalks in this town is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And, and I think that I like your suggestion, if there were another pot of money, that we could use the grant for something that would be different and special. But we're just not remotely up to special in my book. We're up to embarrassing. I mean, that, yeah. that's yeah. really, that's what it yeah. is. And Absolutely. I don't know why he isn't embarrassed by it. Or who, uh, Maureen, didn't they, the uh, town have some kind of a capital uh, planning budget? Right. Yes. So yeah. the sidewalks and everything, I remember the sidewalk by Hastings was in the works or in the plans for ages. I heard it for at least the past Oh, five, six years at least. But I don't really see any action. So where is it? How we can... So I believe what sort of slowed down the work for redoing sidewalks is that DPW also needs to do work on the sewer lines. And so those two projects conflict and also are complementary to one another. And so uh, I believe DPW needs to wait when they are able to uh, do both jobs at the same time. Because if they were to do the sidewalk and then a few years later do the sewer lines, uh, they would have to rip up the sidewalks and, and do it all over again. And so there, so there is that sort of tension there of of trying to time projects so they don't conflict with one another. So I do know that there has been um, that has been a, a big challenge for DPW um, specifically. Um, so uh, well, yeah, but sometimes you know to fill the cracks and things like that. You don't really need a huge project. It could be done uh, temporarily because I understand the sewage project and the roads and everything because they just did it where I live in Amherst Woods. They just connected all the streets with the sewage system and the roads were terrible, terrible, terrible. And then this past year they paved it and it's not, right now perfect. Mm -hmm. until another digging will happen, of course, you know, uh, but, but those are really the permanent solutions. But in the meantime, in some places in the center of town, you cannot really hold it to wait for the big project to be completed because it's endangering human lives in a way. Sure, I hear you. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. And there was one other uh, case that I was almost falling off my wheelchair. I was coming to the town hall. When I went to the town hall and I told the clerk, this was at least three years ago, and this happened right uh, in front of Bank, uh, Bank of America, you know, that parking lot in that someplace in that lift. And I said, I can take somebody and show you. I was almost tripping out of my wheelchair. And I said, there is a very quick solution to that. Just 
put some little cement or something and fill that gap there. But it seems like sometimes I'm just making, it seems like I'm just a complainer and saying things and nothing, no action is taking place. So I hate to be in that situation. You know, they have that uh, site that you can take pictures and send the pictures to the town, but I don't really see much action happening behind that either. Yeah. Thank you. So, and I'm hearing a whole lot of frustration and about yeah. potential danger in town on sidewalks. And yes. if they're not going to fix them without this grant, then they we we better apply for money to fix them with it. Because I hate to use the grant for that. I think Saren is right in theory about what we should be using special grant funds for. But you know, safety downtown. Yeah. Um, you know, even the traffic light situation, it, it used to work. It was never great, but it used to work. And I, yeah. I was wondering if they even turned them off because of COVID, but maybe he didn't. Yeah. Maybe they just don't work. Somebody complained, way. you know, probably too much. Oh, please. Downtown. Right. So the question is, you know, what's the story and what kind of leadership on these issues is he taking? And I understand you're trying to protect his time. And that we should deal with you and the town manager. You'll deal with the town manager. But I mean, um, there's a lot of problems with DPW about safety for people with disabilities and people without. But we're a committee for people right. with. That's right. Uh, th thank you, Myra. The intention of the updating the self-evaluation and transition plan is is and I said this at the last meeting, it will become a living document that will be part of the planning process for uh, uh, allocating money for capital projects and for uh, grants in general. And so since uh, we, there are uh, documented um, areas that need to be corrected for disabilities, uh, that when when there are meetings, um, real discussions for capital projects, this this will be part of the discussion, and it can't be ignored, and it will be incorporated for future projects. Um, so I, I, I feel optimistic with that that this is going to this is a good this is a good step for the town to take um, for addressing uh, issues that. Um, for, uh, for addressing barriers um, throughout town. So, all right. So, do you see if the piece of sidewalk that Elise mentioned is in the report? Yeah, I can certainly. So, I will say that uh, if it was the section that was on Amity Street, it would not be addressed because the consultants did a, just did a sample for sidewalks. They did a sample study of sidewalks from Route 9 to uh, from South Pleasant Street, from the corner of South Pleasant Street and Northampton Road, AKA Route 9, into Coles, uh, Coles Road or Coles Lane, I get them confused often, where mm -hmm. Brugger's Bagel is located. Coles yeah. Lane, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, they looked at the intersection at Amity and Main Street, and then they looked at the sidewalks uh, on Main Street down to Churchill, lane i believe which is uh where the police station uh located so the intention was there that the there are uh very specific barriers that were identified and specific recommendations um and so i think that looking at this these sample areas you can then uh, they're applicable to any sidewalk and any right way of um uh, when it calls out that the, you know, the slope is too, uh, too high or, or too low or, or the cross slope or there is no curb cut um, or, uh, you know, any, any, any specific matter that's addressed, it can be applicable to any sidewalk um, throughout town or, um, or what have you. So. so at the last meeting when Elise wasn't present, the consultants took uh, information from all of us about specific suggestions Ugh. that we had but they would 
had they been, you know, I wonder if they could add this piece since they didn't finish the report yet. Um, I wonder if they could add the piece that Elise just suggested to it. So, so nobody can say, well, that wasn't in the report. You know what I mean? They said they would add anything that we suggested into the appendices. Sure. Uh, I can certainly ask them if, if, if there's time for them to add that in. Um, it's, it's they a little said they further were, down. Yeah. Where this is, is it? Corey. And it's like going toward said, Dana Street, sort of. It's, it's further down. It's like um, past the library. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, it's, my folks live on Dana Street, so it's, I go toward that, um, and, uh, there's a lot of houses, and there, there's just the sidewalks are, are crazy, um, sure. I don't know if they would go far enough, it's not really in town, so I don't know if they would consider that, but I hope they do, so. Sure, yeah, no, absolutely, I mean, you, uh, each of you received the survey that, uh, I sent out back in May or June. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, you know, anyone that filled out that survey could um, could talk about any ma matters that they find are of concern in that survey, which will then be incorporated in the, um, the appendice and their executive summary. So this certainly could be applicable to add. So yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, ask, I'll request them that they include this. Thanks. Thank and you. I think Tori wanted to speak. The people that were at our meeting um, earlier this month said that they would accept emails. So if you have a suggestion, you could write in an email. <laughs> Aha, okay. Maybe, well, Maureen can send it in maybe. I don't know, at least maybe you want to tell Maureen exactly where it is, but yeah, that would be good. So I don't know, as far as this sidewalk, um, I, I mean, as far as this grant is concerned, you're going to talk to the town manager and then you're going to decide what to apply for. Is that how the process? Yeah, so I'll be talking to various department heads and uh, such as the building commissioner and the DPW superintendent and uh and then also the town manager the town manager will ultimately need to sign off on this grant application um so this this grant application won't be decided in like sort of a silo where it's just it's just me it has to be everyone needs to be on the same page that whatever um, project is selected uh as part of this application you know makes sense and is feasible and and what have you I just wanted to make one comment about the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. um, it also, when we get tourists in the summer, the, the, the condition of the sidewalks is bad for them as well. So it's not just for those of us with disabilities. It's correct. You know, it's uh, true. You don't want tourists leaving saying, God, why don't we fix the sidewalks? Yeah. So. That's a very good point, Ruth. Uh, I uh, yeah. remember I was in Brattleboro maybe like two years ago. I was impressed by the sidewalks they had. It was just beautiful. Even the parking lots just and around the center. It's very steep in Brattleboro. It's very steep sidewalks. So Right. Yeah. But they were so nicely made by brick and concrete or blacktop or something. It was maybe it was just completed. And I said, what an amazing design they did with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know where they found the money to do all of these things because it's a small town and it's not a very uh, well off town, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it it was impressive from my view as a tourist that went there for recreation. So um, we don't have that in our town, unfortunately. Maureen, when if um, do you know who is the representative or who might represent us toward the capital planning group? That's a great question. Uh, that's a great question. I don't know the answer. I'm going to write that down. I don't think that that has been discussed. So th that end of the process has not been discussed yet of, of 
how this plan will become an active role in the capital budget planning and who who would help who's uh, going to advocate for who's be advocating for yeah. it? Would it be me yeah. would it be would it be uh, Pat from town council I, these are really important questions and i will be looking. we need a voice yeah um, no, we need a strong voice because somehow the sidewalk pedestrian angle has not been heard so whoever yeah. was responsible for it wasn't pushy enough and so we need to know who is who is our voice and who do we need to talk to um I mean, I don't know if the town manager would ever come to our meetings. I don't know, you know, you, you seem to think the DPW can't. So I, I, you know, I don't know who's responsible to get the message from us to them, but it's really an important, I think an important thing that we need to do as a committee. Yeah. So yes. the town manager said to me l last week that if the committee wants a uh, member, you know, staff people to attend a meeting in the future, that the request needs to go to the town manager, that, that the committee can't just ask Guilford to come to a meeting. Okay. Um, and that Paul, uh, that request needs to go to Paul specifically. Um, I wonder why. Well, huh. It's, well, the clerk came. Did he approve yeah, that? Yeah, I know. So I, I didn't mention that to Paul, uh, <laughs> but because uh, it was, she already already agreed to it. Um, just you know, in consideration of 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 time, um, you know, town staff uh, is 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 juggling several several things um, with uh, applying for grants and, and working on ongoing uh, projects. Um, so we need to make sure that we're making good use of, of uh, staff time. Um, and okay. we might not be able to attend meetings. And so, um, and so Paul, Paul is, is department heads boss. And so, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's, it needs to go to him first and not ex just expect that we can order or request um, staff members to come to meetings. Okay. So, so maybe Myra, what might be a good idea might be if we sent a request to um, Paul saying our issues with the sidewalks in the center of the town and in surrounding areas that are widely used and they are a risk to people with disabilities as well as either elderly or mothers using strollers and things like that and the audio signals and we need to discuss this we need to bring this to the town's attention so could you please assign one of your members department heads so we can air our opinion or something and let's see what he says well i think that's that. maureen's job right is, isn't that what you're yeah and and i think for right now um i i don't think that there's a need for the dbw superintendent uh to come to a uh a meeting in the near future um the transition plan documents the it, the areas that need to be fixed and so now it's the town needs to find funding to correct those barriers. And so that's where the focus needs to be put. Um, and so, uh, you know, Paul, Paul Bockelman, his priority is to make downtown more usable uh, and safe for all, for all residents and visitors. So it is a priority for him um, and the town is actively trying to uh, find grants to pay for improvements. Um, we were able to get the MOD last grant last year to make uh, to redo uh, sidewalk and two crosswalks, um, and there's other grants out there. Um, so the town just applied for a grant through MassDOT, um, and I advocated that 
that there were a part of the that grant that there were some ADA components part of it. Um, and so there were some ADA components for it. So this grant was actually to make, uh, it was in context of COVID-19 and for um, providing um, relief for restaurants to make their outdoor dining areas uh, a little larger. And so, um, and so I advocated that, that um, w w w I advocated for um, some inter intersection improvements at the main and Amity. And so I, so what's included in this grant is uh, truncated dome sheets that uh, each uh, curb ramp at, at the main intersection. And so it's, it's about finding, it's about f identifying the issues and then finding a grant that, uh, that we can slip these ADA improvements on of uh, if the DPW or planning is, is funding for a, you know, a grant that is going to uh, maybe renovate a school or renovate parts of the town hall or renovate parking lots, uh, looking at this transition plan and then saying, well, what can be incorporated to to include ADA uh, improvements and not just, um, so it's about looking at projects with multiple lenses of, of the grant could be facilitating different needs, but then also identifying, well, let's look at this with the lens of ADA. Uh, That's really required in the law. That's absolutely. not a special deal. That's required in the law. There are expenditure limits under which you don't have to comply, but if you go beyond them and they're not that high, you have to be an ADA compliant. They don't have a choice about that. No, That's I, yeah, no, I understand what you're saying, but sometimes the person that's applying for the grant might not be aware that there are ADA uh, barriers. And so having this plan that was done by uh, experts in the- But they ADA didn't do the schools. You just mentioned the schools. They didn't even touch the schools. So, True. I, I'm sorry. I was just I mean, using I, I was just using that as as an example, which I guess was insensitive because it wasn't. They did their own. They have done their own plan. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm not here to you know. I'm here to serve you, and um. And that's really here uh, why I'm here. Uh, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm no, no, no. I know. I'm just saying that we we we're trying to figure out. Who are, I mean, how the process now works. We don't have a town meeting anymore. We have a town council that's still trying to find their way. Um, and I don't know, you know, do they have a joint capital planning commission? Who makes the recommendations about where the money should get spent? I was Probably on the, the joint finance capital committee, committee, maybe, huh? Yeah, I mean, I was on the joint capital planning committee for five or six years when it started in the 90s. And it was a wonderful group that worked out arrangements between us that we all understood what the whole gamut of needs were and we worked together to come up with a plan and we then made those recommendations to town meeting. I don't know who's responsible for doing that now and I don't know who we should be putting um, some, you know, who we should be involving. Maybe it is Pat DeAngelis um, who unfortunately isn't here, but if if, if it is Pat DeAngelis, then we need to make sure that she understands the breadth and the depth of the concerns that we have so they can get where they need to go to the elected officials who are actually going to make the decisions about where the money gets spent. Because yeah. actually, Paul doesn't make those decisions. The town council does. Yeah. Right? And, and, uh, so you make excellent points. And I think, so if we were to create a schedule if you will, to, we're about to enter October. I think that uh, we can't we can't accomplish every single item in one day. And oh no! So, and yeah. so, from the town's perspective, if you were to think about this as a schedule, is October. Uh, you know, October uh, staff will be reviewing the transition plan. November, uh, and this is approximate. November, I, I would hope by November, I'm able to share with you the transition plan for review. December, 
and, and maybe um, and maybe that is part of uh, our discussion. I think for the next meeting, between now and the next meeting, I would like to start having a conversation about what are the next steps. How uh, who will be uh, who will have the seat at the table for these joint capital planning meetings. Um, so I definitely probably won't have the answer for you for the next meeting, but this is this is the process. And so I guess between October and December, we can figure that out. Uh, and when I say we, I mean the town of Amherst. And so I can provide you what I have found and, and then I can, will will ask you as a group, what is your input to uh, about that process? Um, so let's see here, I'm jotting this down. So, so I would hope um, that by November or December, if it takes that long, I'm not exactly sure. So the process for capital uh, budget review, hopefully that, that could be sort of um, solidified or okay. outlined. Um, okay, does that sound reasonable? Yeah, so okay. we, know, we know what the process is, we know who the players are, we know how to advocate and to whom. I mean, I think that's really what we have to figure out. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Alrighty. Um, let's see here. So, what else is on the agenda? Oh, uh, just minutes, right? Yeah, the meeting minutes. Did anyone have any um, comments or edits? No. Um, I do actually. No, uh, there's a there's um where it says confidentiality a couple times in the August 18. It should say confidentially. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, and, there's, it, it, yeah. and there's one line that's there twice. I don't know if you care, but it's there twice. The line there. No, that. Thank you. So if you notice that I provided a couple times, I provided a little like background information. Yeah. Um, I did that. Well, A, for any resident that decides to read our minutes, but specifically mm -hmm. for Pat, since she's new. Um, so Pat- I thought it was great. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And so Pat um, will be, uh, will be uh, providing reports of this committee to the town council. Um, and I think they'll be largely based off of the meeting minutes and then whatever notes she um, has from the from the meeting. And so I just wanted to make sure that she understood what, when we talk about auto mark machines that she knew right. what that meant. No, I think it's great for public information too. I, I think it's, I think I, the minutes are thorough. Thank you. Very good, yeah, thank you. All right, great. Um, well, I, oh, so I guess you need to officially, uh, make, well, oh. you, you need to make a motion uh, to approve both of those. And yeah, if you as, both as amended, you want to have it as amended with the confidentiality turned confidentially. Yes. I mean, it's not substantive. Okay. And that's for both meeting minutes. Uh, I guess you could probably, uh, you could do mo one motion for both meeting minutes. Somebody want to move, we accept the minutes. I second it first, right? We no, you have to it. move it first. Oh. I move that we accept uh, two minutes, uh, two of them, I forgot one was September 8th, the other was August something, uh, with uh, small corrections. That's what you I need a second? I'll second that, this is Tori. Okay, thank you. We need a roll call? Roll, yeah, thank you. You, you wanna call the roll, Maureen? Uh, so, uh, uh, Saren, yes or no? Yes. Uh, Elise? Yes. Uh, Ruth? Yes. And Tori? Yes. And Myra? Yes. Great. Okay. I'm hoping that we'll have our new members at the next meeting. That would be really nice. 
Yeah, that would be really nice. And so speaking of which, when would the next meeting be? So uh, October 13th. October 13th. Okay, and so speak, so yeah, hopefully, uh, basically I won't know until Angela, uh, until I get an email from the town manager's office saying that it's official. Okay. Do you know the names? I well, we do, but we don't know if they've accepted the appointment yet, if they have, you know, so we can't really say, I don't think, can we? Correct. Uh, yeah. Okay, and uh, let's but see. There, there's two new people who are interested? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. hey, oh, so for, uh, maybe uh, we weren't specific about this at the beginning of the meeting. So uh, there were three applicants that expressed interest, uh, three residents, and uh, the town manager uh, scheduled a interview with all three uh, applicants, Myra, Paul Balkman, the town manager, Jim, um, Myra, Pistring. Jim Pistring. Him and then I, we interviewed all three candidates last week, and uh, we, uh, they all were great. Uh, two of them, uh, we felt uh, that their background and experience were uh, particularly of, um, would be useful for this committee. So we recommended uh, two of the three. Um, and so uh, once, um, so we uh, we recommended it to Paul, and then Paul recommends it recommended those two um, persons to the town council. Um, so I'm not sure if they were appointed officially last last night, but I'll find out. He acted um, very quickly. Paul acted very quickly. Yeah. Yep. And um, since we only have a few moments left, um, we did. Just, uh for i'm thinking about what to add to the agenda for the next meeting um i guess i, I will certainly add, um by then i will have the application uh, submitted so i'll let you know what happens with that okay thank you so that'd be october 13th okay mo degree grant um i if uh, if you have any suggestions what should be added to the agenda now, please speak up or um, certainly send an email to Myra or myself so uh, we can add it to the official meeting agenda. Maureen, um, you remember we discussed uh, whether the committee should convert into council and every time I remember faintly that uh, it was going to be checked, whether you were going to check on it or some, or sure. what not. So can, can we kind of review, put it on the agenda and you can update us whether it's a yes or no, or it could be done with this in mind, you know, maybe sure. that might be something. Okay, that sounds good. And um, I'm gonna put up on the agenda, I don't know if I'll, how much information, how much information, if at all, I'll have, but um, I will put on the agenda the capital budget process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, oh, and I want to, hold on one second. I want to pull up an email. Um, hold on a second. Did everyone see my email about the uh, disability summit hosted by... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. What is that? Uh, so they have it every year, and um, and let's see here. I'm, I'm reading off the email. Uh, let's see here. So this time will be virtually, obviously. It, uh, f uh, let's see here. The 2020 Disability Summit focuses on reasonable accommodation within employment and socialization in a virtual world with a wide range of engaging speakers from state government, nonprofit agencies, healthcare, and disability organization. The, uh, the goal of this year's sixth annual summit is to highlight accommodations, self-care, socialization, and resources during the pandemic that can be applied to our personal and professional lives. So I signed up to go to it. The topics are not on the top of my list, but I signed up to go to it. Because there's always stuff to learn about things you don't know anything about. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I signed up as well, so. Okay, yeah, and, and you know, it, luckily it's virtual and you're not driving to Boston, so 
I, I would assume that, you know, if, if you can just attend for a little bit, that's fine. Or, you know, if you need to leave and then you can certainly come back. Um, I think it is an all day. Let me go back to my email. Yes, it is. Yeah. All day. Thing. You know, and so, so I actually have not been able to go in the past because it is in Boston and it's just um, kind of a big commitment for me um, since um, this uh, assisting um, this committee is just a part of my overall job. Um, so I'm always sort of juggling various items at the same time. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm really grateful that it's going to be virtual. So it's less onerous. Um, to, to tell you the truth, stuff that has to do with people with disabilities, I think in many ways is better virtual. Because yeah. all of us have transportation issues. All of us do. Yeah. And yeah. in the winter, you can't, you know, if you do have a car you can drive, where to park it safely so that you can get out of your car in the snow. And, you know, it's just virtual works really well for this kind of group that can't just hop in a car, run in from the garage, you know, and we, yeah. we can't do that. So I really like that. The it's whole time thing. savings, lots of time savings. Yeah. It is, and it's much safer depending right. on when. So and maybe frankly, if you have to go to Boston from this end of the state, it's great. Because you know, if it was here, they would make it start at 11 in the morning because they can't leave early enough to get here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe after the pandemic is over, we, do, we could do advocacy to yeah. have this offered as well as an in-person, a we hybrid model We don't get the coffee and donuts, something. but other than that, it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. All right, well, if there isn't anything else, um, does- Maureen, I have a general question. Oh, sure. If, if somebody whose primary language is not English and oh, they want to yeah. look at our minutes, yep. is there access to interpreters? Uh, translators mm. to uh, translate them into the person's language. We do. Does, he have, does he have Google Translate on the town website? That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is Google Translate and it's relatively decent. Um, and I wonder if they could just have a link to it and how to use it if you want to translate. Yeah. That's a really good question because it's for the whole website, really. Yeah. Right. I do you recall having this conversation with our communications director uh, about this? Um, it, there, there currently isn't a Google Translate on the website, but they are discussing um, that as a possibility. Um, if someone, if it got communicated to me that I needed the minutes translated, uh, we do have a um, someone that could translate it for us um, on a case by case basis. But, um, but yeah, that is a great question. I I'll loop back and ask what the what the status is, whether the town is you know going to um, offer uh, a, like a a translator. Uh, program on the website. Right. Oh, I got an email. I'm on one of those town lists and there is a new health director. There, and is. there is a new HR director. Um, I, don't I don't think they started yet. I think um, they, I know they were appointed, but I don't know when they start. But it's interesting because those are positions that have high visibility and they've both been just changed. So Julie Fetterman is leaving, I guess. She left. She retired. She retired. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, the HR director moved on to uh, a, a different position. So, okay. yeah. So, the uh, town clerk is on a leave, right? Yeah. Uh, he, on a medical leave. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. All righty. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? I move that I we adjourn the meeting, <laughs> or I second, second. it. Okay. And do a roll call. Mm -hmm. uh, Saren? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Myra? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Elise? Yes. Corey? Yes. Great. Perfect. Thank you, Maureen.
I know this might have been a little awkward. I, I, I don't mean to make you think that I was yelling at you at all. I'm, oh, that's good. It's, it's just very, very frustrating because things don't get better and they do get worse. And, and it just seems like, it seems like who's ever in charge of spending money on safety for pedestrians um, hasn't heard enough, I would say. I don't know who they're supposed to hear it from, but they haven't heard enough. So we need to start to talk to them. All they need is one lawsuit and they'll wish that they had spent the money. <laughs> She's right. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Thank you, Myra. All right, everyone. Have a great day. You too. You too. Bye.